Hello, everybody. Welcome to Project Podcast. I'm your host, Ira Bowman, and today I'm excited to have back with me, Juliana Ravi. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. It has been like 10 months since the wow. first interview, right? You know, it's funny. We were talking about that in the green room, fancy. <laughs> and, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I know it's been a while, but I didn't realize that it had been so long. So I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to have you back. You've got a brand new uh, website that just kick, kicked off, and we'll talk about it, that at the yeah. very end. But uh, just like before, I'm going to ask you three more questions. We're going to um, focus this episode on how to find a job in a foreign country. I have so many people that are interested in that. And you, my friend, are the world's foremost expert that I know <laughs> to talk about these things. So I'm excited. Um, in fact, you just shot a video on YouTube. I'm going to suggest people find it. It's called uh, Career to Go. Yes. And that's 19 minutes. It's got a lot of what we're going to talk about, but even more expanded so people can get more information. So without further ado, question number one has to do with being flexible. Really, you know, you even summarize it in your video. The one thing if you had to summarize it all is to be flexible. So I just want to ask you about the company that they're choosing and the type of role that they're choosing. Maybe let's we'll start with the company. Can you give some people advice on being flexible with the company that they would choose? Yeah, some people have their dream companies in mind and they just want to start in the best company ever in their sector. And that's good. I think we should have goals and we should uh, work on uh, getting there, but we should be flexible from the beginning. So, for example, multinational companies, they can offer uh, entry level positions for people with less experience, less qualification. But, you know, you're thinking about the future and, you know, you can grow up inside that company you can develop a career in that company especially when you think about moving into another country maybe you're not fluent in the language of the country maybe you don't speak it at all so your own language can be something uh, an advantage for you in that company but if you are just starting if it's your first position in the company flexibility is one of the keys so you're going to start from below you're going to meet people in person. You're going to have the chance to show your skills, show your potential. And then step by step, you can grow that company. So I think multinational companies, they can be interesting in this process because you can grow inside and you can use your language skills. Uh, and there are different projects, different things going on. So it can be very, very handy for you. On the other side, uh, small companies, if you meet the qualification, um, they can be also more, uh, from the company side, they can be more flexible with your profile. They won't have very high expectations about you. They might ask for the local language. So it's a mix of not choosing only the company, but adjusting your profile with what the company is asking for and your vision about where I want to get. That can be only the first step. You don't need to start in, in a company and think I'm going to stay there forever. It's flexibility from both sides and uh, build up a career. But this first job, this first experience is very important to, uh, to show the country, to show people in that country, look, I can work. I can do my job. I know how things work here. So choose multinational or local company, but both can work depending on your strategy. There's no doubt that that is, uh, is wise to pick a larger multinational company. Let me ask you this as a follow-up question to that. If I'm in the United States and I'm looking to move to Spain, would it make sense for me to try to position myself here to work for a company that has offices there and then try to transfer? Is that something that you see people doing? That's an amazing choice because the company will help you to do this transition, to relocate. It won't be everything new. You won't start from the beginning because you already know the company's culture. Right. You already have connection in, your, uh, in the US or in wherever you're coming from. So that's actually the ideal situation. Normally in those cases, the company also help you to settle now, like finding a flat or they offer you uh, language courses or they help your family to settle down also. So that's the ideal situation. I know that not everybody can relocate with their, com uh, with their company because then we are talking about multinational companies that have offices, they uh, allowed you to move around. That's ideal, let's right. say. Uh, right. So take advantage of that if you can, <laughs> definitely. If not, if not uh, start searching for a company in your own country, but making contact with other companies in Spain or wherever you want to go. And yeah. back to the flexibility, show that you're flexible with the position, not just looking for a 
job title or I want to be a manager, I want to be in a senior position, that will come with time. In my opinion and in my experience, because I also immigrated to Spain and I started from zero, so I'm, I'm talking from the recruiter point of view, but also from my own experience, I have done that. And I started in very uh, low positions and I knew in the back of my mind that there was just the beginning that was just the first step and I could grow and I wanted to grow. So uh, that will come with time, but you need to make this first step and start contacting companies, uh, showing your profile, showing your skills and showing your flexibility in the process. Okay, I want to talk about, and you kind of had this in your answer, but you know, in my career, over my career, 20 years in sales, I've been management and I've just been uh, an account manager, a producer, as we call it here in the United States. So as a producer role or as a manager role, I can really do either. But if I'm looking to go to uh, relocate into a new country, one of the things that you had talked about is maybe taking a step back, not as a permanent focus, but as a, as a strategy, as a, as a starting point, a tipping point, if you will. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. I don't think a lot of people think about that enough. They, they're like, I don't want to go backwards as for fear maybe that they won't be promoted again. But maybe it is easier in some cases to get uh, that job. So if you could talk about that, some of the things that make that a wise strategy. So that yeah. really we can cement it in people's mind that it is not a demotion forever. It's just... Yeah. And sometimes you do take us one step backwards so you can take two steps forward, right? Yeah. A lower position will come together with lower qualifications, lower requirements for that. So you have more chance to meet the expectation, to meet the profile that the company is uh, working for. So if your target, if your goal is to start a career, to start a life, because career and a life, they always go together, right? So right, sure. start a brand new life with a career and with money to pay your bills in a new country. <laughs> Take a step back can just give you this opportunity. I am now working in a company. I meet people. I am doing my tasks. So uh, that's the beginning. That's the first step. Once you're there, people will see your skills and they will notice at some point that your potential is bigger than the position. The position is getting smaller for you and they already know that you adjusted to the company, you are adding new ideas, you are connecting with people. So it's much easier to grow once you're already there. Because if you want to start as a manager, as a coordinator, as a senior, the requirements, the initial requirements will be higher. So there are more chances that people will say no to you at the very beginning. So I like to see it as putting on a scale. So do I only want to go for a super high position? So I'm going to probably receive more no's or am I a little bit more flexible? I accept to start in a lower position temporarily. In my mind, I know I'm going to grow. If I don't grow in that company, because let's be sincere, sometimes it won't happen or it's going to take longer than you planned or longer than you are uh, okay with waiting. You can always apply for another job because you already have an experience in that country and that for sure will open doors for you. So definitely is not a step it is a step back, but as a strategy to get there. You can improve your language skills if you're right. not really confident on the language of that country. Um, you can connect with people. The network thing is super important, right? Once you are in the sector, in the area you want to work, you can attend events. You can, uh, people will know you by name. You're going to connect with them. So even referrals might happen in a natural way uh, and doors can open for you. So if people know you, they can say, oh, I know a guy that meets exactly this requirement. So you speed up the recruitment process. People might be more flexible because someone they trust already recommended you. But all of that will only happen if you're there, <laughs> if you're already working. Right. And so I think it's only advantage if you just go one step behind but as a strategy, not as a settle down um, thing. Well, there's no doubt. And I think the other thing that sometimes people forget, if you're gonna go as a manager's higher level, let's say, then, then taking a step back, you might be okay, but you also have to keep in mind the thing that you said, you have to learn the language, you have to learn the culture, and maybe you know the language like Spanish pretty well, but in the United States, like we learn the dialects from Mexico, not yeah. from Spain. And right. I, from, from what I understand, there's like 40 different dialects in Spain alone, right? So even if you speak some Spanish, you may not 
you, it may still be wise to go get in the country, in the region, in the city, yeah. in the in the in the part of the city that you're going to be in, and you know, start again a little bit lower. It might help you all the way yeah. around. The other thing and is also too, the language. Yeah, there are the technical terms, the specific terms related to your area, related to your job. So maybe you speak a conversational level, which is great to start to go to the bakery shop to meet people uh, on the street and make friends. But you need to have a certain uh, technical language to be able to deal with uh, people in a management level to yeah. make important agreement to have a meeting, phone calls, and all of that. And that is the experience that's going to give you. Yeah. So, uh, and and you don't want to you don't want to come in under and 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 not hit the level of expectation you want to exceed the level exactly. <laughs> you want to exceed the level of expectation so if you're in a lower position and you do a great job it's easier to do that than yeah. to struggle it's a natural step right instead yeah. of going up and they say you know what after two months uh you're not meeting the requirements you won't right. pass the position but that would be really frustrating especially if you're moving with your family or if you left your previous job and you made a lot of you put a lot of money to settle down there right. so i think it's smarter to start from below because you know your potential so just be realistic with yourself i, I know what i can grow i know the direction i want to go so just uh, start because you know that the promotion will come. And if it doesn't come, you go for it. In another company, you start applying again for jobs, you, you build up that, that's gonna happen. It's a matter of time. There's no doubt. Okay, final question, and I'm gonna tie in your website too. So you hit on getting to know people in country, and that is certainly important. Now for the people that are struggling to get uh, their visa, right? Mm. To get, to get the, the actual permission to even come. What I've recommended is that they would join groups on LinkedIn that are from those regions to get to know people. Mm -hmm. But another thing that they need, they need really good uh, documentation. They need a good cover letter. They need a good resume. And they can get that from you on your new website, <laughs> julianarabe.com, right? So tell us a little bit about what you're offering on that website in the next 60 seconds or so as we wrap this interview up. Okay, yeah. A good curriculum, a good presentation letter and LinkedIn, they are the initial step for every person that is searching for a job. It doesn't matter if it's a new country or in your own country or also for an internal promotion. So I always say it's the first step and the basic one. If people take a look at your curriculum and there is a typo mistake or it's not clear what you do, it's not clear your achievements, you might stop on that step. So let's not underestimate the curriculum. Let's not underestimate LinkedIn in this process and all the rest will come from that. So it's the basic step. Um, it doesn't matter if it's entry level position, management position, people will take a look at your curriculum. Then they're going to check a LinkedIn profile or the other way around. They'll find you on LinkedIn and they're going to ask you to send the, the curriculum just to follow the, the formal steps in the recruitment process. So that's the very basic step. If we don't take care of that, the rest might not even happen, unfortunately. So it's, it's important. Curriculum, LinkedIn, presentation letter. Yeah, yeah, so you're helping people with all those things, right? You're helping them uh, consultations, career advice, if they yeah. need their documents rewritten, the CV, yeah. the resume, the cover letter, all those things, yeah. Yeah, teach people how to use LinkedIn, how to improve that, uh, their skills for the job search, how to connect uh, with recruiters, how to increase their network, how to prepare themselves for the interview because maybe they got, they finally got the job interview, but then they get super nervous and they don't know what to say and they lose the chance. So there are different steps on the process, starting from having uh, an amazing curriculum, LinkedIn profile and presentation letter, and then Use that and improve your network on LinkedIn, show yourself, and then prepare for a job interview. So different ways. And yes, I'm, I'm covering that. And you know what is funny? A lot of people tell me, a lot of my clients, they say, you, um, you made me look amazing online. <laughs> like I would hire myself, you know, they say that. Like, I look so good and it's not me. It's just, you know, choosing the right word, the right strategy, but the beauty or the power. The qualification is already there on the client. I'm not making magic. I, I like to say, just put some makeup to look at, you know, to make it look better. But a lot of people give me this feedback. You made me look amazing online. And, and I like that because I think that's exactly what I do to make people, you know, show the best potential. I have, uh, I've heard this from people too, right? Like 
they get their resume or their CV rewritten and they're like, I have been struggling with my confidence. But then after reading you tell me about myself, I'm excited. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's worth it right there. So yeah, that's related to confidence. And I think that's, if you're not confident about yourself, if you're not optimistic, it's not easy. Job that's searching can be stressful, can be demotivating. So we need to do our part and look inside and just, um, make our peace with the situation. Okay, I'm in a job search. It's not the end of the world. What can I do to speed right. up this process? What can right. I do to get the best results in a faster way? There are ways to do that. And asking for help, um, it's one of the ways, probably the best one, because you save time, you save energy, and you yeah. get feedback from inside. Well, let's sum, let's sum this up. Be flexible. Look for a, a bigger multinational company that has a lot of positions so that there's opportunities to grow. Don't yes. necessarily start at the height of your career uh, path. Take a step back so there's room to grow and master that culture while you're there. And then, of yeah. course, make sure your documents are in a row. Make sure you're networking with people. And first and foremost, beyond the flexibility, you need the confidence that you're going to succeed. You are awesome. You just got to show people that, right? So you summarized it in a great way. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I was paying attention the whole time. How about that? <laughs> Juliana, it is always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. I have your website flashing down at the bottom somehow. Fancy graphic thing I'm going to create. I haven't thought of it yet, but I will. <laughs> Thank you for coming back on Project Podcast. I look forward to seeing you again really soon, my friend. Yes. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye. My pleasure. Bye-bye.